So, so I didn't spend the whole entire time alone, I guess. But out of the 137 days, I was probably alone almost the, the 100 of the 137. Hmm. So mostly alone. There was some yeah. time in there where uh, I was traveling between places. And actually, I, I ran into a young kid who uh, is a native from as far north Alaska you can. Like a real native. And uh, he was a young boy. And the story is about a young um, Aleut uh, native. And so he traveled around with me for a couple of weeks. And I learned a lot from him. And that was really cool, too. And also, you know, one of the things that was interesting is I forgot what it was like to be 18. You know, 18 years old. And, and I think I remember what it was like. But when you hang out with an 18-year-old that's not your own child, um, and you start seeing their their characteristics and, and just the, the things that make them tick and that are fun or funny. Or, you know, like, I wouldn't have known that element in the 18-year-old character that I was writing, you know, like some oh. of those things. And they just have different different things about them, too. But we had the most amazing experiences. He taught me way more things than I ever would have imagined because he's from a different planet, almost. You know, yeah. like, I never yeah. I never grew up And you got to be in, on his planet. Oh, man. Right, so not only is he from a different planet, but you got to be on his planet and understand what he's thinking, why he's thinking it, where he learned it, and how it applies. Wow. And I get to life. learn the, the, what, what do we have in common. Yeah. You know, what we have in common is he, he has the crazy story when he's 10 years old, him and his uncle and his grandfather and his aunt were out camping, and uh, it was super cold, and they fell in, and they died. And uh, he had to, at 10 years old, try to get his... Uh, aunt or his grandmother, I can't remember one, back. Um, and he also pulled his two year old uh, cousin out of a frozen water, too, who was dead. And that was at a very young age. And, and he still to this day talks about, like, I just saw his grandfather's like 10 year anniversary of his death was like, was like a couple weeks ago. And he's still talking about it, you know, like, I learned more from him and I miss him so much. I can still hear him playing that he was the best guitar player and all that. And I realized that no matter where you are, like, you still have that love. For your, for your family or your loved ones, and we all have that connection. So no matter where we grow up, we have that in common, you know. And to see that human side of someone who had never eaten pizza, didn't know what pepperoni was or mushrooms or green peppers, or, like all these things he didn't know, and, and he didn't understand when I took him to uh, Safeway, it's like a grocery store, mm -hmm. yeah. and outside it says Safeway Food and Drug. And when we get out of the vehicle, he goes. They sell drugs here? <laughs> and my first thought was like, no, it's not. Well, actually, they do. Yeah. They sell drugs right here at the store. And he couldn't believe that they actually sold drugs at a store. You know, He's probably thinking different drugs. I'll share another cool story about this guy because he really impacted me. He really did. And I remember, you know, he only had a pair of shoes that were really bad. And you know how you need muck boots and oh, stuff yeah. like this. And so I took him to buy a pair of actual shoes and a pair of muck boots. And, uh, you know, the, the tough, uh, extra tough boots are, are like the most important thing to an Alaskan. Sure. He could never afford his own, so I was like, buddy, you're getting your own. And I'm going to buy you a pair of shoes. And he found these pair of shoes, and he was so excited. And he was like, oh, yeah, these are the ones. This is my size. And we would go up to the counter. The lady at the checkout said, like, um, these are women's shoes. You know that? And he's like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. And I was like, wait, are you sure these are women's shoes? He's like, Doesn't no, this is, these are awesome. And I remember him, I remember him getting in and putting these shoes on and looking at these new shoes and his smile on his face, like he was so freaking happy. I don't know if he's ever had a brand new pair of shoes ever, you know, who knows. Um, and he was just, and he didn't want to throw away his old shoes. He's like, no, you can throw them away. Like you've been obviously wearing them for a long time. They're all ripped out and, and this and that. And you've got good boots now and good shoes. And, and he had a hard time like throwing them away. You know, and, and just that value of, you know, I, how many pairs of shoes I've had that were brand new my whole life. And sure, even to this day, you know, I have shoes I don't even wear or boots. And uh, to see this guy light up for a pair of women's shoes, that purple shoelaces, he didn't even care what they looked like. He had no idea. He didn't care if anybody was going to make fun of him. Well, you got women's shoes on. He didn't care. He's got freaking brand new brand shoes. Brand new shoes that are comfortable you know? and warm and clean. Yep. They were yeah, his. that's why not anyone else has ever before him. When I hear the story about that 18-year-old and uh, some completely different culture, you didn't discount. It doesn't sound like you discount the individual at all. Joel likes to say, 
you know, he said on this quite a few times, and something that I've learned from is, you know, take the meeting. Well, in the same respect, take the opportunity and look what you learned, right? So there's so many meetings that I took that I was like, eh, and then it turned out to be the best thing I've ever, I could have ever done. Okay, that was one of the most, one, there's a lot. One of the most important things was they told me early on when I came to Alaska, it's like, whenever somebody invites you, say yes. And I didn't understand it at first. And the first time I was, I was fishing, I think it was out in the Kenai Peninsula, and this, this group, they said, hey, uh, we're going to have a little barbecue out on the river. And I was like, no, I have to, I'm going to drive like two hours tonight, so I'm just going to get a jump on the road. And I remembered somebody saying, like, no, say yes. And so I did, and it was so amazing because they ended up connecting me to so many people who later was able to connect me with somebody else in my journey, this long journey. And not only that, but then I made friends, and, and I got to share one of my salmon with them, and they were super excited. It was this amazing fresh sockeye salmon. And, and we just bonded. Um, and then, so then later on 4th of July, when I came back into town, they had a 4th of July party and invited me out to it. And it was just like these friendships. One of the things we've said a lot on this, on this is, you know, we don't leave this life with anything but two things, relationships and experience. And what you got right there in bold. Oh, relationship and an experience. It's one of the things that, that I really, really encourage people that that don't travel internationally and don't travel like to places like this, Alaska, that I encourage them to do because the experiences that you have with people that are outside of your immediate circle from a cultural perspective and everything else. I absolutely love that story because it's like, you know, international travel is a big thing for me and my wife and it's like the affinity that you can find and the commonality that you can find in another human never ceases to amaze me. It's a kid that had a very, very different life and we all have different lives, but yet we all have a very, very common thread, you know? So, a very, very cool story.